everybody, and welcome to The Wench Bench, where friends sit and talk about fabulous fictional females and how their stories have influenced us throughout our lives. My name is Fonda. And my name's Adam. I'm so excited because some of you might have listened. If not, you should totally listen to our previous bonus episode where Allison and her husband talk about Ripley from the Alien series. Well, this time, I get the pleasure of having my husband be a guest with me during social distancing during the COVID-19 pandemic. Quite happy about it. I am excited to speak loudly and enunciate about females. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) So today, I'm going to be talking about Hinata Huga. Adam, do you know anything about her? I did watch all of Naruto originally. I was more of a fan of Neji uh, because he's just so cool and good. But if you could make me excited for Hinata, that would be awesome. I can totally do that. She's, she has a crush on Naruto. She does. Yes. That's what I know about her. Oh, that's what a lot of people know about her. Her crush is very obvious in the anime and the manga. Pure love. Pure love. Can I start by giving you some basic information? Yes, please. Okay, awesome. So Hinata Hyuga is a kunoichi of Konohagakure, which is translated to village hidden by the leaves, and she is a female ninja. She is part of the Hyuga clan and was formerly the heiress of the clan, but her younger sister Hanabi became the heiress instead. Because Hinata is a member of the Hyuga clan, she possesses the Byakugan, which is called a Keke Genkai, or bloodline limit as it's translated, which gives them extended fields of vision and the ability to see through solid objects and even the chakra circulatory system, among other things. In turn, Hinata also possesses an innate ability which allows members of the Hyuga clan to expel chakra from any of the Tenketsu in their body. Tenketsu are basically pressure points. Something worth noting about the Hyuga clan, that they are descendants from the Otsutsuki clan, an ancient clan of horned celestial beings. Specifically, yeah. Specifically from the Hamura Otsutsuki lineage, he was the son of Princess Kaguya and the twin brother of Hagoromo Otsutsuki, which as a result means the Hyuga clan are distant cousins of the Uchiha, the Senju, the Uzumaki, and the Kaguya clans. There's so much information in there that I did not know. (laughs) Like what? Like she has a sister? Yes! (laughs) That they would... The Byakugan would let people see through solid objects. Yeah. That they're send descendants from gods. Yes. It's all more than I noticed from the anime. A lot of it's in the manga. I only read the manga for Shippuden. You should continue. <laughs> Maybe read like a too long, didn't read or watch anime series. That's what this is for just Hinata. Hinata. Yes. She's also a member of Team 8. Do you remember who Team 8 was, Adam? When you need exams? In general? Um, do, you mem- do you remember? Because there's Insect teams. Guy? Yes. Do you know who Insect Guy is? Shiro? No. Sh- Shino? Yes. And was there Koga? Ki. Kyoga? Ki. Ki. Ba. Ki Ba. The guy with the dog. Yeah! So, teammate consists of Hinata Hyuga, Shino Aborame, Kiba Inuzaka, and Akamaru, his dog. And their team leader is Kunai Yuhi. Um, at one point, Kakashi was actually their leader, but only temporarily. I don't remember that. That's the girl, right? That's the leader? Yeah. 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 Okay. She had that, like, cool outfit with, like, one long sleeve. It kind of looked like bandages going up. She had, like, really kind of, like, fluffy, wild black hair. I remember her as the only female Jonin. She was at that time. Yep. When the series first starts, both in the manga and the anime, Hinata is 12 to 13 years old. Uh, When we see her grow up throughout the Naruto series, and we continue to see her in the series that follows called Boruto, which is also a manga and an anime, of which she is one of the prominent adult characters from the previous generation and a mother of two. So in like... 
all of the series, both Naruto and Boruto, we get to see Hinata from, like, childhood growing up, Mm -hmm. which I think is kind of cool. If I haven't already said it multiple times, Hinata Hyuga is from an anime and manga series called Naruto, which I remember loving so much as a kid. I remember staying up to 8.30 p.m. to watch it on YTV every Friday. Oh, miss those days. So now that I've gotten, like, the basics about her out of the way, something that is important is actually her background information. So stuff about her that not many people know that happened before the series technically started or sometimes in like filler episodes where they would like tackle information or sometimes in like light novels but before i get into that adam quick question directed at you ready so you said that neji was your favorite character yes do you have a favorite female character from the naruto series That is tough for me. There was not one that stood out above the rest. Trying to think of all the cool ones. I'm even trying to think of like the video games that I played with Naruto. Mm -hmm. And if there was any that I played more than the others. Maybe Sakura because her inhuman strength was just fun to punch people. And she had like that symbol on her head. On her forehead? The the diamond? No. Uh, When she get angry. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. The it, I think some people call it like the inner Sakura, like from the manga anyways. Okay, that's fair. She's like the main female protagonist in the series because she's part of Team 7. So I can see how you would enjoy her a lot, not only because she's like really strong, but she's also more prominent in a lot of material. Yeah, and I think her powers maybe stood out as some of the more unique. I can't remember a lot of what the other... What was very unique about the other females' powers? I mean, Hinata stood out because of Byakugan. There was a whole thing about that. Mm -hmm. But that'll be my answer to Sakura because she's really strong and punches stuff. As a boxer, I love that. (laughs) Fair point. Thanks, honey. So, as I've already said, Hinata is a part of the Hyuga clan. She is the oldest daughter of Hyashi Hyuga, who is the current leader of the Hyuga clan. When she was still young, like really young, she was almost kidnapped by what was the then head ninja of the Kumugakure village, who were at the time visiting Konoha under the guise of signing a peace treaty between the two villages. Hyashi killed him and saved Hinata, setting in motion the events that would become known as the Hyuga Affair, which has the following information. So this affair happened nine years prior to the start of the series. Kumo Gogakure denied all accusations of kidnapping and demanded the body of Hyashi as compensation for the death of their head ninja. Hizashi, now this is going to be hard because we have Hiyashi and Hiyashi's twin brother Hizashi. Yaza. Yes. <laughs> he decided to go in his brother's place because they were twins. Not only that, but there is an advantage to this because Hizashi was part of the sub-clan, basically. There was a branch clan that Hizashi and other Hyuga members are a part of where they get this, like, branded curse that is sealed and placed upon their foreheads. And the reason they do this is because if any of them are to get kidnapped or if anything bad is to happen, the seal upon that branch member's death would activate and it would be able to safeguard and conceal all the secrets about the Byakugan because only the Hyuga clan has Byakugan. So it would explode their eyes? I don't know full details on how that happens upon their death. I don't believe it explodes their eyes, but I think it seals away all the like chakra the innate abilities and just makes them a normal eye that's wild yeah question yes could kakashi mm-hmm. take a byakugan eye and put it in his own face like he did the shining gun yes it's weird how eyes are just interchangeable in this show <laughs> i know there's no surgical <laughs> they just take it just take eyes and shove it in your own face. In your own eye hole socket, yep. And there's some people who have super special eyes, and they just walk around like normal people. Mm-hmm. Wow. Crazy, right? There's like a probably some 
crazy creatures out there with th hundreds of eyes that are just stronger than anything, like a Shoggoth. Technically, the Otsutsuki clan have access to all the powerful eyes that exist in the Naruto universe. Can you briefly explain the difference between Hiyashi and Hizashi? So Hiyashi is the older twin brother They're brothers. of Hizashi. Yeah. At the time, the it doesn't go into much detail about like the past past of the Hyuga clan, but they were very strict in terms of like who would be able to lead the clan. Mm -hmm. And so Hizashi and Hiyashi battled it out basically to see who would be the more worthy heir. Hiyashi is obviously the current leader, so he was a successful heir, which meant that his younger brother would go into the branch clan. Right, okay. So just because he lost doesn't mean he's dead or anything. No. But he is dead in this case because he went in Hiyashi's place and sacrificed himself during the Hyuga affair. What a great younger brother. Yeah. Not a lot of people viewed that right, like Neji. And we'll get to that later. Okay. As I stated earlier, Hinata was raised to be the next head of the Hyuga clan, and her family expected great things from her because of it. However, Hinata was believed to not be suited for the role of heiress, as she struggled under his gruesome training, and on top of that, he also believed his daughter to be too timid. So when Hinata's younger sister, Hanabi, started displaying superior talent, Hiyashi began to reconsider Hinata's selection as heiress. In the anime, Hinata and Hanabi were pitted against each other to determine who would one day lead the clan, but because Hinata was unwilling to harm her sister, a hesitation that Hanabi did not share, Hinata was ultimately defeated, disappointing her father, which then led to her disinheriting the role she would have been given as heiress, and she was turned over to the care of Kurunai Yuhi, Hinata's team leader and teacher. So, for Hinata and her sister, Hanabi, mm -hmm. were they determining who the heiress would be because there was some sort of matriarchal line? Or is it just because there was only between Hiyashi's two daughters? Because Hinata's the oldest, it should have gone to her. If they were twins, I'm guessing the same thing would have happened like it did with Hiyashi and Hisashi. But Hinata, as the oldest one, didn't display what they wanted in a leader, and the younger sister was. So Hiyashi basically pitted them against each other to ultimately see if Hinata could prove herself. She didn't, so but if Hanabi Hiyashi, got it. If Hiyashi had a son, he wouldn't have priority, or Hinata would not have had priority. It's just born based on... I guess in this case, merit, rather than gender. Yeah. Good question. So in the series, Hinata has a cousin named Neji, who you love, and he was the son of Hizashi, so Hinata's uncle. The reason I bring this up is because throughout the series, especially part one, I consider him to be a foil to Hinata. They both contrast one another and highlight their good and bad points especially because their relationship as cousins and family members is very complex. Neji is a part of the branch house to the main house for the Hyuga clan, meaning he is always going to be in service to Hinata and her family. At first, this isn't something Neji shows much understanding towards, especially when he's younger, and Hinata even calls Neji big brother a lot throughout the series. It wasn't until later, when his father dies that this becomes a turning point for him because he becomes a lot more bitter and resentful towards the main house, and it shows with his treatment of Hinata and others who try to fight fate. During the Chunin exams, this is especially prominent because Hinata and Neji are matched up to fight each other. Before they fight, Neji encourages Hinata to give up not only the match, but also the life of a ninja, citing her meek personality and her lack of talent but Hinata is encouraged by her team and Naruto to fight, and it reminds her to stay motivated, and that she also doesn't give up. As they fight, Neji continues to try and persuade her to forfeit, but Hinata refuses to back down. Finally, after her internal organs are left badly injured and she has difficulty standing, Hinata uses Neji's words against him, arguing that he cares so much about destiny and being worthy of the Hyuga because his own destiny deprives him of the Hyuga's recognition. 
Neji is enraged and moves to kill her, but he is held back by Guy and the other observant Jonin. This is important to know because later in the show, guess who encourages and convinces Neji that faith isn't predetermined and he should stop being concerned about it? Hinata. That would be awesome, but Nar- no, it was Naruto. Naruto. <laughs> Naruto. Yet again, the main character is used to show other characters that their faults are and how to cut off ties with those negative traits to focus on better ones. This is the point where I'd like to say Hinata and Neji's relationship starts to shift. It's not shown all that much or often or exactly how they change. But in part two and onwards, Hinata and Neji appear much closer, and Neji doesn't treat Hinata the same as he did prior to his fight with Naruto that resulted in his outlook changing. But both Hinata and Neji continue to be foils of one another, but more the better come part two onwards. Yeah. Why do you like Neji so much? He just seemed competent. He had a chip on his shoulder, but mm-hmm. so do a lot of the characters early on in that show. Yeah. Looking at Sasuke. Uh, but... I think especially when Neji starts to open up later on, he is, like, he's one of the first Jonin. He's considered, I think, a genius. Yeah, so I think he's just very good at what he does and doesn't just rely on brute strength, but actually has skill behind things. Mm -hmm. I think that's why I liked him. And he had a cool eye power that didn't relate to everyone around him dying. Yes. When did Hinata's uh, Byakugan awaken? I believe... When she, before she entered the academy, before she entered the training academy, I did as much research as I could about her background. Nothing exactly stated when. So, so it's just assumed that because she's an heir, then she had that power. Yeah. Okay. So she lost to Neji and she got beat up. And Badly. Then was, and then she was eliminated from it? Yeah. She was eliminated from the tuning exams. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then when's the next time that we see her at large? In terms of when we next see her at large for, like, fights or in the series? Either or? Well, even though she wasn't able to continue with the fights, she's still often a part of different um, missions that either multiple teams might go on or Naruto joins Team 8 in some quote-unquote filler episodes where they go and do different things. Um, So she has shown quite a a bit throughout the series, um, especially because of, again, like, Neji and her and her fight... And then a lot of stuff happens in result of, like, the Hyuga clan, learning about the magical eyes that exist in this world. And the Hyuga clan are considered Konoha's strongest family members and, like, individuals of people, just inherently because of the Byakugan. So even if Hinata is not present all the time, I would say her and her family have an important role in the world that exists. Right. Yeah. But the show is ultimately about Naruto. So I would like to say immediately after there was something really cool, but she is sadly not a prominent character all the time, Mm -hmm. especially because it's about Naruto and Sasuke and their friendship, which seems very complicated. A important moment in Hinata's background that I would like to say was on the day of her enrollment into Konoha's Academy. She was picked on by three bullies because of her eyes. Naruto, who happened to be nearby, and despite not knowing her at the time, immediately came to her defense. Even though he was outnumbered and defeated, when he came to, Hinata thanked him for helping her and went to return his scarf that had gotten damaged during his fight with the bullies. He ended up letting her keep it, and after she thanked him again, he smiled and he left. It was from this point on that Hinata started watching Naruto, and by doing so, she saw that Naruto's desire to gain attention and his struggle to exceed the low expectations that others had for him was because he ultimately doesn't want to give up. So even though I want to talk about Hinata, I think it's important to say that Naruto is also a huge part because it's his ninja creed that she follows, which is to don't give up. Mm-hmm. and to like never lose your way as a ninja. So she ended up adopting that creed because she was inspired by him. So she started emulating Naruto um, and his refusal to never give up. She did this as a way to start earning her father's approval, which turned into her not giving up just to earn approval, but to her never giving up because it's a belief she has for herself and those she loves. So I think before the tune-in exams, she tried adopting 
the creed specifically to gain her father's approval, but I believe it was after the fight with Neji that she realized she needs to do it for herself first, not just a family member. So what is it about Hinata that makes you like her? Oh boy, I'm glad you asked. I'm just about to get into it. So when I first came across the series, I was introduced to Nata back in elementary school. I was in grade six. Can't remember how old I was in grade six. Twelve. About the same age of Hinata. Oh, maybe that makes sense why I also really enjoyed her. We, I, we appeared the same age. At first, it was her design that actually stuck out to me the most because I thought she was blind because of her eyes. And, you know, on YTV, they don't always show episodes in the correct order so sometimes I'd never see her fight and I'd just see her and I thought wow it's really impressive that this girl who might have a a disability of some kind is going to be a ninja like I wonder how that's going to work well that's why there was the seeing eye dog on her team oh (laughs) nice but yeah so I thought you know I thought she was interesting at first glance and I didn't really know much and I was like, oh, how's a blind ninja going to work in this world? Like, that'll be really cool. Is she going to have, like, hyper senses? Is it going to be, like, daredevil? You know, like, I'm trying to figure out this cool-looking female character in a ninja anime. Uh, soon after, I found out that she wasn't blind, which was totally fine. And I was still super excited about her. I wasn't disappointed. I was just like, oh, okay, that could have been a cool thing. But she has these cool magical eyes. That's also really cool. Aside from her design... Um, That being the first impression of her I had, it was actually her demeanor and personality that I think made me really start to like her. Because you were quite timid yourself, especially among other people from the school that you went to. You weren't as boisterous as other people I knew around you at that age. Yeah. I mean, when I really got to know people, I kind of was. And Hinata's kind of similar. She's not like suddenly does a 180 but when she's around her team members she's a lot more comfortable and vocal and so I remember kind of like seeing that in myself when it came to like school and classmates and even sometimes around someone you might have a crush on you know she was quite timid I don't think I was to the extremes that Hinata was where she'd sometimes faint but I definitely remember feeling like her and I were similar because she's really reserved easily flustered And even though we have different levels of shyness and timidness, it was her reservedness and flusteredness that I felt I kind of matched. So it was nice seeing another character like that, especially because Sakura uh, Haruno, the main female protagonist of the series, she's very vocal, not just in her words, but also physically. She's a lot more present in her personality, and I even though I was like, wow, this girl's like super strong (laughs) and I like her hair color. It's pink. That's neat. I didn't see myself fitting with her, especially when it came to how willing she was to fight for a boy she had a crush on. I just wasn't that type of person where I'd argue with a friend of mine over who loves Sasuke more. I don't know. I just, I couldn't connect with that. So I felt like I could connect with Hinata who had more of a quiet crush on someone and just want someone to be okay Mm -hmm. yeah i guess i just when i was younger i felt like hinata and i were similar in aspects and while i know i wasn't as shy or as timid as she was i always found it hard to mingle and get outside my friend group and when i also liked someone again i felt kind of like shy and got embarrassed and sometimes i felt unsure of myself and how to act and Exactly like Hinata, I felt I had zero confidence in myself and my own capabilities when I was younger. Oh. Yeah. Especially with school. Uh, There was only like a couple subjects that I thought I really did well in, but I always thought I just sucked at other things. And at one point I'm like, why should I try getting better at it if I'm just not good at it? And so because Hinata didn't have confidence in herself in part one for most of the series, I felt inspired by her because she tried so much and even though she failed a lot that added to her you know not having much confidence in her strength as a ninja but to bring naruto back into the conversation i guess throughout the show he never let his flaws and failures discourage him and though he has moments of doubt in the series he has always been optimistic character who 
you know, shapes those around him. And he did that for Hinata. His own determination made her reevaluate herself and muster up the courage to overcome and work on her own weaknesses to allow herself to change and grow into a confident person that she thought she could be. Yeah, yeah. Just like Naruto had this creed to not give up and to accept the things that you might not like about yourself, because he was always weird and the odd one out. But to see a kind of female take up that and find success. Also, when you relate to them when they're shy, then it means you can also see yourself relating to them when they're successful. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's nice to see. And it's always in anime, I think, a lot, which is why I think anime has gotten as popular as it has. But you see people fail a lot. Like, they're not afraid to show everyone failing and everyone going through hardships and having different stories. And so I think that was the first time I felt like they showed a shy, timid character who wasn't just always being clumsy and always being kind of, like, depressed and down on themselves. Yeah, maybe sometimes she goes into that habit of being timid and shy and unsure of herself, but it showed her try and not always, like, revert back to the beginning before she tried. It it shows her, like, okay, here's her first stepping stone, her next stepping stone. Like, we actually kind of see her become more sure of herself. Yeah. Yeah, like, I want to see Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh become a complete badass. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You're so down on himself all the time. But soon he's saving the world. Oh my gosh. With his ninja powers. Yes. And his cool tail that can come on and off. Just like a puppet, which we also see in this series. Oh, yes. Yes, there is an ability where you can control puppets with your chakra. (laughs) There's one guy whose body is a puppet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Got about that, huh? Yes, he's part of the Akatsuki. Akatsuki group of people. I guess what I'm curious about, because I know that Hinata also has a huge crush on Naruto, and that's basically her outstanding feature for most of um, before the training exams when we focus on her. You just see her. I just saw her okay. as a background character, just like the rest of all the people who are in the program. Yeah. Uh, however you would put it, and before they actually focused on you get to hear about their backstory. Mm-hmm. She was the girl that had a, the quiet girl that had a yeah. crush on Naruto. Yes. Coincidentally, you had a huge crush on me. <laughs> I, I did, yes. Does that relate? Did you find any similarities with Hinata that way, or is that just coincidental? Was that too late? In high school, when I had a crush on you, I definitely felt... Like, I don't think I was as sh- as shy or in the level that I guess, like, people view Hinata would be. But I guess in terms of, like, coincidences or similarities, I definitely fumbled a lot whenever I tried to tell you my feelings. <laughs> but I think I was more comfortable and confident physically around you, while in the show Hinata gets very red whenever Naruto gets, like, anywhere close to her physical space unless they're fighting and in a serious moment then it's like that's not really the focus but if it's like a casual thing suddenly naruto's like really close to your face and touching your forehead while hanging upside down on a wall and being like do you have a fever you're really red and she screams and she bonks him on the head knocking him out and she also passes out like i've never had that i don't remember that either but maybe because i was bonked on the head (laughs) okay yeah Is there a favorite scene with Hinata? Like, is there a favorite part in the series that stands out to you? Is it when you learned about her backstory? Or... So I have, like, my top three moments that I want to talk about. But I think what stood out to me the most was actually in a filler episode where Hinata, teammate, and Naruto are fighting and there's a bunch of these, like, dumb thugs or whatever and they kind of, like, incapacitate the other crew members because of this giant freaking bug that's like a giant wasp. Anyways, Hinata uses these like palm techniques because of her chakra, right? Like she can expel it and she can use the Byakugan and she's like doing this like cool palm movement and she's just starts really slow and it's like lasers are kind of coming from her hands 
that's how they show it to show what the chakra's doing because it's technically invisible. You can't really yeah. see it. So it looks like lasers are coming out of her palms and she's like doing really fast straight arm movements and she's cutting down all these like really bad insects but she keeps getting quicker and quicker and quicker and she creates like a barrier of her chakra around herself that's kind of like a net because of how she's moving Mm -hmm. and she ends up killing the big bad bug and i think it's really cool because she did it solo and all these other team members were like hinata and like telling her to like you know like they got incapacitated. They're like, she's going to be in trouble. And she saved them. She did pass out, though, because she overused her abilities. Because she's she is 12. Right. But she had a specific strength and used it effectively. Yes. It was the right tool for the job. And, and Naruto acknowledged her. Oh. It was cool. On the topic of... Hinata and the Naruto thing because I think a lot of people will argue and take the stance that Hinata changed herself for Naruto for a guy not for herself and they often dislike her for those reasons but Naruto didn't make her change and yes she has a crush on him throughout the entire series but she doesn't change herself for a guy A trope that I personally really dislike. I believe she changed herself for her sake, for herself. And yes, Naruto had an important role. He was the figure who inspired her to seek change in herself for herself. But like many of us in real life, there are people who we admire, whose traits we often look up to, and those people often shape us as we grow up. Naruto was a person who helped provide that push that she needed, not the sole reason for her to live or do anything for her. This is something he has done for many characters throughout the series, like Neji, as a prominent example. He inspires and provides encouragement for them to make changes in their own lives. Yeah, like you said, and the way that you've explained it, she drew inspiration from him and changed her life because she wants to emulate that in a way. But that's different than that's different than changing yourself purely for uh, the reason of having someone look at you in a certain way. Yeah, there's more of a inward motivation for it than mm-hmm. relationship wise. Yeah, but I know it's like it's something a lot of people talk about. There's kind of two sides to the Hinata, and like with most people, same with Sakura. There's a lot of people who pit the female characters against each other in the show and. We'll say that Sakura is much better because she actually does stuff. And then people will be like, Hinata is useless. She doesn't do anything. I think people come in with biases and I think it's okay to have those opinions. But I don't think she is a useless character that's just there to have a crush on Naruto. Yeah, she just like any character in a story, she serves a purpose. Mm-hmm. And that might be defining traits early on, but it doesn't mean that a character can't grow and develop. While we're on this topic... Uh, Why is Hinata better than Sakura? I am not going to go there because I think they both have their good individual traits. Yes, I like Hinata more. She's just the character I personally identified with at a young age and saw similarities in. And I think she's super cool. I've always liked her. Yes. What? Can can I reword this? Okay. Why do you ship Naruto x Hinata rather than Naruto x Sakura? No, I don't want to go into ship wars. Okay. I think I will try to answer quickly because you you asked me so politely. I like Naruto and Hinata because I believed early on that I think Hinata kind of treated Naruto a little bit better. Sakura definitely at the beginning, I think only saw Naruto as how many people saw Naruto at the beginning of the series. And she had a huge crush on Sasuke, so of course she wouldn't really think of Naruto early on. I definitely think her viewpoint on Naruto being on the same team that Sakura changed, it's very prominent that she doesn't view him the same way she did when she first started being a ninja. But I don't... If the writer and the artist were going to have Naruto and Sakura get together... I think that's something he would have shown glimpses of or moments of. But even after so long of just Sakura and Naruto being without Sasuke, Sakura only ever thought of Sasuke. 
And though she acknowledged Naruto a lot and was always there for him, there wasn't really... Like, there was one moment where she lied. She flat out lied to Naruto and said she loved him and would be with him. And she did that to stop Naruto from doing something. And Naruto knew that. Like, he knew she was lying. So I think that was kind of... I would have been happy with whatever had happened ultimately. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just because how she treated him at the beginning and how it was just kind of obvious to me personally, other people can argue against it. She truly only saw herself wanting to be with Sasuke, no matter how good of a guy Naruto was. But Hinata saw how good of a person Naruto was and could be before a lot of characters did in the show. Yeah. And so I liked her treatment of him better early on. And I kind of admired how he was oblivious to her love. Like, Naruto seeks and sought love a lot in the series. And he got it in many different formats from many different people. So I, I guess I just found it, you know, kind of interesting, the one-sided love. And that's kind of why I liked it. It was like, Hinata's a cool character who treats him nicely. And I think they'd look cute together, but ultimately Naruto's going to get with whoever the creator wants him to get with. And if it's Hinata, that's cool. And it was, spoiler alert, (laughs) they got together because he acknowledged her. There is one point where Hinata gives encouragement to Naruto before he's about to go into a big fight. And she tells him flat out what his good points are. No one had yet, in my viewpoint, no one that was his classmates had yet done that to him. Mm -hmm. Showing that someone watched him and acknowledged what his good points are. And it cheered him up. And he thanked her for it. And he thought she was a person. And, like, I quote, he says, a person like you, I really like. So he just likes people that are good, like Hinata. But throughout the show, he always acknowledges how strong she is, how good of a person she is. And she's always been, and I would say, some critical moments of Naruto's life where she will use her words to encourage him and to make him stop doubting himself. So I think just like having that kind of person in your life can make you at some point consider and view them in a romantic sense. Cool. Yeah. Sorry, I really like them as a ship. I don't want to go into it too much. I just want to talk about Hinata. We don't need to go into it more. <laughs> okay. Tell me about Hinata. Ooh, do you want me to tell you about the, my top three Hinata moments? Tell me about Hinata. Hinata Hyuga. Hyuga. So do you remember who Pain was? Was he the blonde guy with all the things in his face? He wasn't blonde. He was oran- orange-haired. Okay, was he the orange-haired guy with all the things in his face? With all the, like, face piercings? And they, yeah, and they fought outside Hidden Leaf Village. Yes, he was the leader of Akatsuki. Oh, I didn't know he was a leader. Yeah. Okay. So, Pain is an antagonist that comes in the Shippuden arc, which is considered part two of the Naruto storyline, I guess. He ends up assaulting Konoha. And Hinata joins her teammates in defending the village. Pain later destroys the village. Like, it's a huge crater. Like, it's bad. Like, people have obviously died. But Hinata is saved from harm by Katsuyu. And Hinata's bodyguard, Cole Hyuga, is not as fortunate. But he refuses Hinata's attempts to find him medical attention. And Hinata watches from afar with literally everyone else who can as Naruto fights pain alone. She initially obeys Katsuyu's and Kyo's instructions not to interfere. But after Naruto is captured by pain's tendo, tendo is like his, it's called a diva path, which is a type of ninjutsu chakra ability that pain has it controls gravity and stuff gravity that was his power yeah Yeah, it's really crazy so he gets captured through the tendo and he's basically going to have the nine-tailed fox demon ripped out of him because naruto is a host to a powerful nine-tailed fox beast yes and they're going to rip it out of him because they're collecting all of the nine tails yes Hinata does not hesitate, and she comes to his defense. She's the first and only person to do so at this point, by the way. Just saying. Could be anybody else. 
She's That's courageous. Her. She is courageous. When she comes to his defense, she forces his tendo, Pain's personal injutsu ability, away from Naruto. But Naruto pleads for her to run away, telling her that she can't defeat Pain. Despite knowing this already, she tells Naruto that she will fight Pain because after years of watching Naruto and improving herself by following in Naruto's example, Hinata tells Naruto that she loves him and she came to protect him like he's protecting others. So she ultimately starts attacking with her gentle step twin lion fists is her personal ninjutsu ability. In the anime, she succeeds in removing some of these like black receivers that are restraining Naruto and keeping him from moving and fighting. And she even ends up like stopping and hitting Pain's personal ability, the Tendo, a few times. But the outcome sadly remains the same. Pain quickly defeats her with the Shinra Tensei. He has another set of powerful magical eyes. They look like ripples effects, as if like there was a droplet going into water. Like, you know, that like ripple going out. That's kind of what his eyeballs look like. Circle within a circle within a circle. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. So he stops her and then he stabs her with a black receiver, leading Naruto to believe that Hinata was killed and thus causing him to enter a version two form of the nine-tailed beast. Hinata, however, is still alive, and when Team Guy finds her, Neji gets her immediate medical attention. Sakura Haruno heals Hinata's injuries, allowing her to tearfully join in the village's celebration when Naruto returns after defeating Pain. So that's my top one. The reason I chose this moment is because, for me, it really highlights how far Hinata has come since the beginning of the series. Again, though she ultimately failed in defeating pain, something she knew, her goal was to help protect a friend, companion, and fellow ninja whom, yes, she declared love for. And it wasn't to show off or prove anything. That isn't the type of person Hinata has become. She doesn't have to prove herself to anyone as long as she stands by her views on what a ninja and a person should be. And I believe this highlights that completely because anyone could have decided to step up before she did at this point, but it was her. And I believe that if Hinata hadn't done that, I think she would have really regretted and would not have been able to be proud of herself. So that's my, that's my top one. That's nice. It's kind of like a, the ultimate portraying of uh, this creed that she wanted to adopt Right? When it, it's when you're willing to give your life to protect people and you've seen someone else do it. When you say, I'm ready to sacrifice the most important thing to me to protect what's important to me, then that is touching. Yeah. Touching. Touching. Especially because, like, she knew she wasn't going to win. You know what I mean? Like, not many people can go into something knowing they're going to fail and still try it anyways. Exactly. So, I was like, she also, I mean, told him she loved him. Before he was dead. Before he was dead, which is important. But also really, it was really sweet. She's like, because I, he's like, why are you doing this? And she's just like, because I love you. And then she fights and he doesn't respond to her declaration of love until like the movie. <laughs> the, wait, she loves me. <laughs> so that's number one. Uh, number two for me is the first Shinobi War Climax. Okay, the end of the Shippuden? Pretty much the end, quote-unquote, the end of the series of just Naruto. Hinata and the rest of the allied shinobi forces are sent to assist Naruto in his battle with the Ten Tails. The Ten Tails is when they collect the chakra of all nine-tailed beasts and they create the Ten Tails. Right. Which mathematically doesn't add up because there's a one-tailed beast, a beast with two tails, a beast with three tails. Like, technically, the beast should have more tails, but I understand how, plot-wise, all of the nine-tailed beasts were once the ten-tailed beast, and they just got divided. And the more tails you have, the stronger of the beast you were. Right, like, one each tail was one fifty-fifth of its power. Yes. But then now that it has... Ten tails. It it's has... 100%. Damn it. <laughs> we almost had it. <laughs> we almost did. So, anyways, they're fighting the ten tails, and 
Recognizing how crucial that Naruto is to the war's victory, Hinata, Neji, and Hiyashi join forces to block attacks directed at him because the Hyuga are the strongest clan. Neji and Hiyashi quickly become preoccupied protecting other allies from the Ten Tails, leaving only Hinata to defend Naruto. The Ten Tails fires several volleys of these like wood projectiles at Naruto, which Hinata uses her body to defend him. But Neji, in turn, uses his body to defend Hinata and is mortally wounded because of it. Watching Hinata crying for him as he dies, Neji observes that Hinata was willing to die for Naruto, which he uses as evidence that Naruto is responsible for more lives than just his own. He then dies from his injuries in the arms of Naruto. Naruto is disheartened by the death of Neji, and others in the Alliance. And when he starts to show signs of giving up, Hinata brings his senses back by reminding him of his vow to not let any of his friends die. Although Neji may be dead, he will live on as long as others continue the fight that he gave his life for. Therefore, she tells Naruto that he must stay true to the creed he has been using for so long, and that she has also long since adopted for herself, to not give up. Naruto's resolve is renewed, and he thanks her for standing by his side, and he takes her hand, and he transfers some of his chakra to her as they continue the fight. She's just really motivational through the entire thing, isn't it? She's like a really supportive person. Yeah, it's another good scene. Because I believe it's like a great example, similar to like the first one with the pain assault, where everyone saw Hinata for who she was and what she was willing to fight for. This scene is Hinata further down her ninja path that she picked up from Naruto back in the academy, which is to not give up. So I believe that some people argue that Hinata appears kind of heartless here because she isn't outright weeping or being inconsolable over Neji's death. But, like, it's war, and if anything, Hinata knows that she doesn't have time to properly grieve for his death. And, like, she is shedding tears. She might not be weeping and, like, crying over his dead body, but she knows that this death is affecting Naruto possibly more than it might be affecting her at this moment in time. And so, instead of being the one who isn't able to get back up over the loss of her cousin over Neji... She pushes forward and she ends up supporting Naruto by reminding him that what they are fighting for is really important. So in my mind, I think Hinata has always been great when it comes to being there for others. And though she fumbles with her words at times, especially when she's shy and flustered, she always knows how to support her teammates and her words are always that of encouragement and support in intense moments. Mm-hmm. It was real sad, though, when yeah. Neji died. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. That's why I had to choose a new favorite character. And who was that? Rock Lee. Oh. <laughs> Rock Lee is cool, though. He's really cool. Was, but but was, he's not a genius. He's kind of the opposite. Okay, maybe not like like book smarts genius, but like in terms of physical prowess, Rock Lee is like... He's not a fabulous fictional female. We don't need to get into it. Okay, you're right. He's a he's a fabulous man with big eyebrows, though. Beautiful eyebrows. Beautiful eyebrows. So I have one final moment, Adam. The Chunin exam. Okay. I already talked about how Hinata fought Neji earlier on. So what I want to talk about isn't that fight, but after that fight. As I said earlier, Hinata collapses after the fight that she lost with Neji and the damage to her organs being too severe. And before she loses consciousness, she sees Naruto checking on her. And while she's losing consciousness, she wonders if she managed to change at all. She's taken away by a team of medical ninja to be given emergency medical attention. We don't really see her for a while. It's not about until like a month later on the day of the Chunin exam final matches that Hinata has recovered somewhat. And although she's supposed to take it easy, she ends up going to the third training ground section to practice. Naruto ends up stopping by on his way to his finals, and he's actually glad to see that she's better. Because he's scheduled to fight Neji, Naruto shares his concerns that he might not be strong enough to defeat him. 
Hinata says that she believes he is strong enough and that even if he isn't physically strong, he still has strength of perseverance. A willingness to keep trying despite apparent failure until he finally conquers his obstacle. She admires him for that. Naruto is put at ease and he thanks her before he walks away. So I chose this as my final moment because this is the first time we see Hinata realizing she is indeed changing in herself, which put into motion all the other events that I just talked about that lead to her being such a strong character that she is by the end of the series. But it's also the first moment in time that Hinata tells Naruto face to face what she sees in him and what she believes his strength is and how she ultimately admires him for it. I just really love this scene because the two of them, it's the first heart to heart that they have and it's a great moment for Hinata as it's her first stepping stone basically towards the person that she wants to be and it's also the first time that like naruto acknowledges her for who she is because prior he only kind of saw her as like the gloomy timid person that other people saw her as so it's like the first time that she is being acknowledged while simultaneously it's also the first time naruto is kind of being acknowledged by a peer cool yeah so gee, i was rambling a lot No, no, it's great. What, can you tell me what you you got from this, from Hinata Hyuga? Hinata Hyuga. Uh, Well, first of all, the things that you really liked about her are the way that she starts off in the series is more reserved and shy and timid, and that actually is part of the strength of her in that she has a different kind of relationship with people that she wouldn't otherwise have, and that it really helps contrast with later when she does start believing in herself more, when she has this confidence, then she maybe has a better podium to stand on while preaching about uh, you can do it and you can't give up and you don't need to stop. So uh, she's just been motivational throughout the series, especially with the main character, Naruto. She has a special relationship with him. I think that's what I got from that. That's spot on. Everything I said in under (laughs) under a minute, you just reiterated it. I, I should have just had you say that. It, I'd be like, show's over, here we go. I have a question a little bit, is that we didn't really get into Boruto. And that's something yes. that I have no idea of. Okay. How's she portrayed like in that show? So I haven't really watched it much. I have only watched the Boruto movie because I believe the movie came out before the anime started. Don't quote me on that, but I think so. So she's very, again, she's a mother character to Boruto, and she's a stay-at-home mom. She isn't shown to be active in duty for, like, ninja roles, but she's really loving, like, incredibly loving. And obviously she'll do the mom thing sometimes, or she'll be, like, upset. Like, I think at one point Boruto is fighting with Naruto in the kitchen about what to make Himawari, Boruto's sister, because she's sick. And she sees them fighting and she gets upset about it and she has them stop. So it's interesting because before we never really see Hinata get like, quote unquote, angry or upset as a mom, you kind of get to see her be more sure of herself. And though she's very supportive and she's still kind of like reserved, but in more of a mature way, because she knows how to use her words effectively. She knows that she doesn't necessarily have to be present in everything. And she's always there to encourage Boruto because something that Boruto has a hard time with is Naruto being the Hokage. He's hardly ever home as soon as he gets that job. And Boruto kind of acts and lashes out on it, being upset because he'll come home exhausted and he won't do anything. There was one time when he came to, it was Himawari's birthday, and he's like, yes, I'll be home, but he sent a clone of himself. But because he was exhausted, the ninja clone poofed away and the birthday cape dropped and fell on the floor. And Boruto was more upset about it than Himawari was. And Hinata's always trying to explain to Boruto that, the, his father's not doing this, Naruto isn't doing this to upset him, but his job as Hokage is incredibly important, and he has to take care of the people of the village. He can't always be here, but he tries. And, yeah. The more that I think about it, there's that she would be an incredibly supportive mom, not only just because she has a patient personality, but because she herself had to live up to a a lot of expectations Mm -hmm. with her sister and that being the Hokage's son. 
or the children that they certainly have expectations, even if they're not laid down on by the parents. Um, so to be able to maybe share her experiences in some way and help them grow despite those expectations that they might not be reaching, I'm sure that would be very Yeah, easy. and something I read about, um, because a lot of people that I follow on Tumblr, they talk a lot about some of the scenes that show up with Boruto. The Hyuka clan changes a lot, and it's not only through Naruto, because there's actually a quote in the movie where Naruto says to Neji that when he becomes Hokage, he'll change the Hyuka clan for the better. But the Hyuka clan ultimately changes through the Shippuden series, but they become more loving. And before, you would always see Hyuga members fighting against each other in training. That still happens, but it's not to the extremes as it was shown when Hinata and Neji were growing up. You actually see Boruto training with Himarari side by side instead of like at each other to prove who's better. And Hinata's there, and it's just like really sweet, I think, because the contrast is like Naruto had nobody, like his parents died. He didn't grow up with that. Boruto gets to grow up with a loving family of people who understand how important it is. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I I should watch the series, but it's really long already for me to be like, Naruto was 700 chapters, and now Boruto's going on. So I think maybe I'll wait until it's a little... It's never too late. It's never too late, especially right now during social isolation. You have so much spare time. I have all the time in the world. But yeah, so I think that's, that's why I really like Hinata Hyuga. Awesome. So, Adam, we have a part on the show where Allison and I, whoever's done talking for the character that they're focusing on, will ask the other person what they're excited about. It can be about anything. So what are you excited about right now, Adam? What am I excited for? Yeah. Uh, This weekend, I'm excited because they're planning on having UFC 249. So that's... (sighs) They're going to be in Florida, and that despite all the COVID and the cancellations they've had, they're going to have some really, uh, hopefully, good fights on. I, I'm excited to watch some nice mixed martial arts that is not just old replays on YouTube. I'm happy for you. I really hope it goes okay, given, you know, COVID-19 stuff, that they take the precautions they need. It'll be interesting. Yeah. I think the uh, drug testing that they normally do isn't as strict. Like, they don't come into your house to test for stuff, so I wonder if we'll get some bad results afterwards. Oh, no. So you think there could be some drama resulting in the fight? Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? No one wants to take blood. True. (laughs) No one wants to do a lot of things right now. Oh, well, thanks, honey, for sharing what you're excited about. You're welcome. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, everyone, for listening. You can find us, maybe not my husband, but you can find Allison and I and our podcast wherever podcasts can be found. Please make sure to rate and subscribe if you haven't already. And you can follow us on Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram at WenchBenchPod. And if you want to reach out, you can send us an email at wenchbenchpod at gmail.com. All the art for the Wench Bench was designed by the wonderful Tessa Joyce Rican, and you can find her on Twitter at Wherevile. Thanks for listening, and talk to you soon. Bye! Oh, Naruto-kun, I love you! (laughs) What's your word, (laughs) honey? Sorry, Allison. <laughs> hey, Fonda. Yeah? Uh, we know when you, like, crush garlic, you let it sit for a second. Yes. What's that chemical that comes out of it? Allison's. All right, cool. Now please continue. Thank you.